In this video, the key concepts that we will examine are the processes of mitosis and cytokinesis, which are fundamental to cellular division and the formation of two genetically identical cells. We will review details of the cell cycle, outlining the precise sequence of events that govern cell growth, DNA replication, and division. We will also discuss the regulatory mechanisms that control the cell cycle, emphasizing the importance of checkpoints and control systems in maintaining cellular order and preventing abnormalities. This exploration will enhance our understanding of how organisms grow and repair. The continuity of life depends on the ability of cells to reproduce. New cells arise from pre-existing cells through a fundamental process known as cell division. This process is essential for growth, repair, and maintenance of tissues in multicellular organisms. Specifically, for cells involved in growth and repair, mitosis is the form of cell division that ensures that each new cell receives an identical set of chromosomes. Mitosis is followed by cytokinesis, and this physically divides the cell into two daughter cells, each with a complete and identical set of genetic information. To ensure that both daughter cells have the energy needed to survive and function, mitochondria must replicate and be evenly distributed during the cell cycle. Mitochondria possess their own genetic material, and they replicate independently of nuclear DNA. This replication typically occurs throughout the cell cycle, but it's particularly important during S phase. This replication involves mitochondrial DNA duplication and mitochondrial division through binary fission. The cell cytoskeleton ensures that mitochondria are evenly distributed between the daughter cells. Other organelles that are distributed to the daughter cells include the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, centrosomes, plasma membrane, lysosomes, and chloroplast in plant cells. In mitosis, it's important to note that the chromosome number and genome of the two daughter cells are identical to the original cell. This is not to be confused with meiosis, which is another form of cell division, and this is involved in the production of sex cells. The formation of sex cells halves the number of chromosomes and generates genetic diversity. The reduction of chromosome number during meiosis is essential for maintaining the stability of the species-specific chromosome number across generations, therefore avoiding chromosome doubling during fertilization. Now let's take a look at the stages of mitosis in more detail. Cell division is intricately related to the cell cycle, which is the series of stages that a cell goes through in order to grow and divide. Understanding this relationship is crucial for grasping how organisms develop, maintain themselves, and repair damaged tissues. The cell cycle consists of four main phases, G1 or GAP1, S or synthesis, G2 or GAP2, and M, mitosis. These phases represent a continuous process that ensures the cell is prepared for division, and that division occurs accurately. Note that the resting phase, or G0 phase, is a period where cells are not actively preparing to divide. Instead, they are in a state of quiescence, performing their normal functions without progressing through the cell cycle. Cells in G0 phase are metabolically active but do not undergo mitosis or cytokinesis. This phase can be temporary or long-term, depending on the cell type and conditions. Let's start with G1 phase. During the G1 phase, the cell grows and carries out its normal functions. It synthesizes proteins and organelles and increases in size. This phase is critical for preparing the cell for DNA replication. During S phase, the cell replicates its DNA, ensuring that each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. This phase is essential for providing the genetic material needed for both daughter cells. During G2 phase, the cell continues to grow and produces the proteins and organelles which are necessary for mitosis. The cell also undergoes final preparations for division, 
ensuring that all components are ready for the mitotic phase. During M phase, or mitosis, cell division actually occurs. It includes both mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis is the process by which the cell's nucleus divides, distributing the replicated chromosomes into two daughter nuclei. Cytokinesis follows, dividing the cytoplasm and cell membrane to form two separate identical daughter cells. The cell cycle is tightly regulated by a series of checkpoints and molecular mechanisms, primarily involving proteins called cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases. These checkpoints ensure that the cell only proceeds to the next phase if conditions are favourable and if previous processes have been accurately completed. Key checkpoints include G1, G2 and M checkpoints. Disruptions in the regulation of the cell cycle can lead to uncontrolled cell division, which is a hallmark of cancer. Understanding the precise relationship between cell division and the cell cycle provides insights into how cells maintain their integrity and how errors in these processes can lead to diseases such as cancer. We will discuss this more later on in this video. Now that we have seen the phases of the cell cycle, including the stages of interphase and mitosis, let's take a closer look at these phases at the cellular level. As we can see in the diagram, the distinct phases of mitosis are prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase, which occur after interphase. The acronym PMAT, or PMAT, is often used to help you remember the different stages. Following telophase is cytokinesis. You're expected to be able to identify the different stages of mitosis as well as interphase and cytokinesis. And this would be from a diagram or a micrograph. So let's look at each in more detail. Let's start with interphase. During interphase, DNA is in a relaxed thread-like form called chromatin. The relaxed state allows DNA to be accessible for transcription and translation, which occurs during protein synthesis. The nucleolus is a prominent substructure in the nucleus. It's responsible for producing ribosomal RNA and assembling ribosomes. If we were to look under a microscope, the nucleolus is visible, and chromatin appears as a diffuse granular material, and it's spread throughout the nucleus. As the cell transitions from interphase to prophase, one of the most significant changes is the condensation of chromatin, and this is into a more compact structure called chromosomes. This condensation is crucial for the accurate segregation of genetic material during cell division. As prophase begins, chromatin fibers start to coil and condense as a result of supercoiling. They become visible as distinct structures called chromosomes. Each chromosome consists of two identical sister chromatids, and they are joined together at a region called the centromere. During prophase, the nucleolus gradually fades and becomes less distinct, indicating the cell is preparing for division. The nuclear envelope, shown here, which encloses the nucleus, breaks down into small vesicles. This disintegration allows the spindle fibres to access the chromosomes, which is important for the next stage. In order to identify prophase in a diagram or micrograph, you can look for the distinct visible chromosomes, which are composed of two sister chromatids, and you'll find them spread throughout the nucleus. Now let's take a look at the next stage in mitosis. Metaphase is the second stage of mitosis following prophase. During metaphase, chromosomes, which have already condensed and are highly visible, align along the metaphase plate. This plate is an imaginary plane located equidistant from the two poles of the cell. We can see this here. It's not a physical structure, but rather a region where chromosomes line up. Each chromosome centromere lies at the metaphase plate, and sister chromatids are arranged on either side. This ensures that the sister chromatids will be pulled apart to the opposite poles of the cell during the next phase. Spindle fibres, specifically condental core microtubules, attach to the centromeres of each chromosome, and this is with the help of proteins called kinetal cores. You can see this illustrated here. Each sister chromatid 
is attached to microtubules from opposite spindle poles. You can recognise metaphase by the alignment of chromosomes along the metaphase plate. Now let's take a look at the next stage. Anaphase follows metaphase, and it's the third stage of mitosis. During anaphase, significant changes occur both in the nucleus, or what was the nucleus before it dissolved, and in the cytoplasm. These changes are crucial for the proper segregation of chromosomes and the eventual division of the cell into two daughter cells. The primary event of anaphase is the separation of sister chromatids. Each chromatid, which was previously part of a duplicated chromosome, is pulled apart to the opposite poles of the cell. This separation is facilitated by the shortening of the microtubules, which are attached to the kinetal cores, the protein structures on the chromatids where the spindle fibers attach. We can see the centromere here, which is where the sister chromatids are held together. Once separated, each chromatid is now considered an individual chromosome. These newly separated chromosomes move towards opposite poles of the cell. You can identify anaphase from a diagram or micrograph by looking for the chromosomes attached to the spindle fibres, and they are being pulled towards each of the poles. Now let's take a look at the next phase. Telophase is the fourth and final stage of mitosis, and this follows anaphase. This phase is crucial for re-establishing normal cellular structures in the two daughter cells. The reformation of nuclear envelopes occurs around each set of chromosomes at the two poles of the cell. This re-establishes the nucleus in each daughter cell. The nucleolus, a dense region where ribosome synthesis occurs, reappears within each new nucleus. The chromosomes begin to uncoil and return to their less condensed chromatin state. This makes the genetic material less visible under the microscope. In animal cells, the contractile ring, which is composed of actin and myosin proteins, starts to form. We can see this here. It has an important role in cytokinesis. You can identify telophase by the appearance of two daughter nuclei and the unwinding of chromosomes into chromatin. Now let's take a look at cytokinesis, which follows mitosis. Cytokinesis is the process that divides the cytoplasm of a parent cell into two daughter cells, and this completes cell division. Cytokinesis follows the final stage of mitosis, telophase. In animal cells, cytokinesis begins with the formation of a cleavage furrow, which is an indentation of the cell membrane. We can see this here. The cleavage furrow typically forms at the site of the metaphase plate where chromosomes were aligned during metaphase. The cleavage furrow is driven by a contractile ring made up of actin and myosin filaments, two types of cytoskeletal proteins. The contractile ring tightens around the center of the cell, similar to how a drawstring bag closes. This contraction is powered by ATP. As the contractile ring contracts, the cleavage furrow deepens, progressively pinching the cell membrane inward. Eventually, the contractile ring pinches the parent cell into two distinct daughter cells. Each daughter cell inherits its own nucleus and a roughly equal share of the cytoplasm and cellular organelles. The two daughter cells are genetically identical. You can identify this stage based on the presence of two identical daughter cells. It is possible for this stage to result in cells that are not identical, such as an oogenesis or budding in yeast. Now let's take a look at cytokinesis in plant cells. Let's consider how plant cells divide during the M phase. Unlike animal cells, plant cells cannot form a cleavage furrow, and this is due to the rigidity of the cell wall. During anaphase, vesicles derived from the Golgi apparatus move to the center of the cell, where they coalesce at the former metaphase plate. These vesicles carry cell wall materials, such as cellulose and pectin. The vesicles fuse to form a disc-like structure called the cell plate. The cell plate continues to grow outward and eventually fuses with the parent cell plasma membrane, and this occurs during telophase. This separates the cytoplasm into two distinct compartments. 
Once the cell plate is fully extended and the new cell walls are formed, the two daughter cells are separated by a new fully functional cell wall. We can identify cytokinesis in plant cells by looking for the cell plate. As we have seen, the cell cycle is composed of interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Interphase, as already mentioned, is where the cell prepares to enter mitosis. In order to ensure that the cell is prepared for division, there are several checkpoints that a cell must pass through during interphase. Let's take a look at these in detail. The cell cycle is strictly controlled, and this is in order to ensure that the cell meets all the appropriate requirements before entering the next stage in the cycle. These checkpoints are controlled by cyclins, and they are a type of protein. As we can see in the diagram here, there are three checkpoints the cell must pass through in order to enter mitosis. One between G1 and S phase, one between S and G2 phase, and the final between G2 and the beginning of mitosis. At each of these checkpoints, proteins called cyclins are involved in controlling the phases of the cycle. The threshold concentration of specific cyclins must be reached in order for the cell to move into the next stage. By looking at the graph here, we can get an idea of how the concentrations of cyclins change during interphase. We can also see that different cyclins are involved at different stages. Here, we can see the peak of G1S cyclins, and this must be reached for the cell to progress from G1 to S phase. We can also see that as the cell enters into the next phase, the concentration of these cyclins decreases. We can see here the peak for S cyclins, and this allows the cell to move from S phase into G2. Finally, we can see the peak of M cyclin, which controls the checkpoints between G2 and the beginning of mitosis. So in this way, the cell cycle is tightly controlled, making sure that the requirements are met before a cell enters into mitosis. If a cell does not meet the concentration required for any of these checkpoints, it will not progress into the next stage. If a cell doesn't meet the requirements, it will either pause, undergo appropriate repair, or be programmed for cell death. We call this apoptosis. You're expected to understand the significance of the threshold potential in regulating the cell cycle. Understanding the concepts shown in this video is important because they reveal how cells normally grow and divide, and also why precise regulation is crucial for maintaining cellular health. The following were covered in this video. All cells come from pre-existing cells. In all living organisms, cell proliferation is achieved through the cell cycle. Interphase is an active phase in a cell cycle where the cell grows, organelles are duplicated, and DNA replicates. Interphase is composed of G1, S, and G2 phases. Mitosis is composed of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Cytokinesis follows mitosis and is different in plant and animal cells. The cell cycle is controlled at different checkpoints by cyclins. The cell cycle will only proceed to the next phase if the threshold concentration of cyclins is met.